If you're wondering how credit score works in the US, continue watching this video. Hey guys, my name is Parthu Jivarga. I'm a grad student at Purdue University and I'm doing a co-op at a company out of Providence. I'm also sitting in Providence downtown, which looks absolutely stunning today. It's a very nice day. I've spent enough money on credit cards and I've had them for enough time that I can actually make this video and talk some sense into it. I will make a completely different video on just credit card recommendations and what credit card I use and reviews about them. But in this video, I'm talking about credit score and how you can build your credit history based on your credit score. In the meantime, if you're still wondering what credit cards I use, I'm going to link uh, the referral links for the credit cards in the description below. So if you want to check them out, you can get them. Uh, I've used them personally. I've used them multiple times over months. And I do recommend them. So to have a credit card, first of all, you need a social security number. There's a loophole to it, but to have the first official credit card, you need to have a social security number. To get a social security number, you have to have an authorized work visa. For all the students who are watching this, you guys are on F1 visa, which means that you can work 20 hours per week on campus jobs, not off campus, on campus jobs. And to get the paycheck or to actually work on campus as well, you have to have a social security number. Social security number is a nine digit number, which puts you in the US tax bureau system and it helps them to track what are your spendings, how many credit cards you, are you using, what could be your interest rate. It is very similar to Sybil score in India. Now the fundamental question pops up. What is a credit score? Credit score is a numerical expression based on a level analysis of person's credit files to represent the credit worthiness of an individual. A credit score is primarily based on credit report information, typically sourced from credit bureaus. Now that was the definition of it, let me explain it in an easier way. For moving into credit scores, let's take up a follow-up question from the definition. What is a credit bureau? Credit bureaus are consumer credit reporting agencies. They collect and aggregate information on millions and millions of customers and the payment companies you're going through. They track your payment habits. That's a simple definition of it. Some of the credit reporting agencies are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experience. They will give you your credit score, but it is not necessary that all the credit scores given by these companies will be similar. The method of retrieving your credit score could be different from for TransUnion than from Equifax and it might vary from credit bureau to credit bureau. So it really depends what kind of credit bureau uh, a bank or a apartment are using to retrieve your score. If you have seen the Netflix show Black Mirror, you already can relate how this thing works. Credit score ranges from anywhere between 300 to 850. If your score is above 740, that's super, that's exceptionally good. Above 800 is like gold for all the companies. But as a student who's watching this, your score might range from 680 to 710. Now, there are multiple reasons for that and we are going to talk about that in this video. Now comes the bigger question, why credit score is actually so important. Consider credit score as your GPA. If your score or if your GPA is 3.9 and above, professors will give you advantage, you'll get awards for that and you will get scholarships for that. Similarly, it works for credit score. If your credit score is good, you will have to pay less interest for your loans. You will have to pay less security deposit while you're renting out an apartment. And there are multiple offers which will be given to you if you have an awesome credit score. For example, a friend of mine wanted to buy a phone. Since his credit score was over 710, he got a Samsung S9 for $15 per month. Whereas the same S9, if I want to buy as like a person who doesn't have that much credit score built up already, I would have to pay first of all $300 in deposit and then I'll have to pay $15 after that. So you can already see how much difference a credit score can make. If you have a credit score of 710 and above, that actually denotes that you pay your dues at time, you pay your interest at time, you pay your credit card bill at time, you do not overspend, you use only 30 to 40% of the credit limit and you're just a financially responsible person. This is also a myth that as soon as you get a social security number and get a credit card, it does a 
mandatory say that you will get a credit score you'll have to build credit score over the period of six months before six months you can get credit score but those are soft scores given by fico which doesn't say that this is your score but if you'll spend over time with the same pattern of what you're spending before then this is what your score might show after the six months now if you want to talk numbers i can talk numbers to you someone with a fico scores in the 620 range would pay around sixty-five thousand dollars more on a two hundred thousand mortgage than someone with a fico score of over 760 or maybe let's take a car loan on a five-year basis on a thirty thousand us dollars car loan the borrower with a lower score would pay fifty one hundred dollars more and these ranges and this data is from node wallet if you do not know about node wallet i'm going to link their website in description it's a great way to understand and be financially responsible they track your data and they tell you how to spend and how not to spend and what you can spend on so yes credit score is a big deal and to maintain it is your duty next couple of questions hey path how do you even build a credit score can i use my debit card and will that build my credit score I'm really skeptical about credit cards. Well, first, you definitely need a credit card to build a credit history. You can't do the vice versa. Second, no, you won't have any credit history with debit cards. And third, don't be skeptical about it. Be knowledgeable about it. It's a simple process and you will get through it. Now, there was a huge myth previously going on and I was in the deep dive there as well that you need a social security number to get a credit card. But I realized that there are multiple banks and companies who are offering credit cards without uh, actually having a social security number. They take your documents like I-20, passport and all of that and they will give you a credit card. And when you actually get a social security number, you can give them the social security number and then they can uh, report your credit history to them and they track down you as a person and your credit history on the basis of your date of birth name your know, mother's name father's name passport number there's just so many data points which they can track you with and that is it thank you so much guys for watching this one uh, i hope this was useful i'm gonna make a new complete video next to next week about credit cards and what credit cards i recommend uh, I've been using them for a while and how you can actually track your credit score as well through a couple of apps. Everything will be included in that video. Thank you so much guys for watching. Sayonara. Gonna get lunch with my credit card now.